Hi, Dr. JB here. When you come to the emergency room with your emergency, then find yourself waiting two, four, six, eight or more hours. What do you think's going on back there? Do you think we're playing games? Stay tuned to find out. Dr. JB in the house. Dr. JB in the house. Dr. JB in the house. Dr. JB. Dr. JB. Dr. JB in the house. 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 Hi, I'm Dr. JB. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am a board certified emergency medicine physician. I have had experiences working in all types of ERs. I mean all types, from big cities to rural America, from ERs where there were two, three or more docs working at a time to ERs where I was the only doc um, working that shift. In those settings, not only was I the only dark doctor working in the entire emergency department, but sometimes I was the only doctor in the entire hospital. What did that mean? Well, that meant that not only was I responsible for taking care of anybody who came into the emergency department, but I was also responsible for going to Code Blues anywhere in the entire hospital. I've also worked all different times of the day as an ER doc. Um, I've worked the early morning shifts, the mid shifts, and the overnight shifts. And last but definitely not least, I've also been the director of an emergency department. So needless to say, I have a pretty good understanding of how the ER works. So before we get into the topic of why am I waiting so long to be seen, I want to let you know that on this YouTube channel, whenever possible, I'm going to try to use analogies to help in understanding certain concepts and ideas. So let's start with the first one, the club. Remember when you went out clubbing, you were dressed nice from your head to your toes, walking around with the most uncomfortable shoes. You approach this club, you find this bouncer at the door and this long winding line and you think, yeah, this is where the party's at. And so you join the end of that long winding line and you waited and you waited and you waited. And then finally you made it to the front of the, of the club, but your feet were killing you, but you were so excited because you made it and you're about to enter into this amazing club. You walk in and you find the dance floor is bare. There is not a soul in that dance floor or in the club. And you wonder where'd all these other people that were ahead of me in the line go? Well, I'm here to let you know that the ER is not like that. We actually take pride when we see that the, that the waiting room is empty. When the waiting room starts filling up with patients, that actually induces stress. When you're waiting hours to be seen in the waiting room, that's because that the rooms that we have to work with are full. Notice I said the rooms we have to work with. I know. I know we've all been there, right? You get, your name gets called, you're being pulled to the back and you're walking by these empty rooms and you're like, really, you guys are full? Well, let me let you in on a little secret. That has to do with staffing. Similar to a 24 hour Walmart, overnight, they work on a skeleton crew. And as the day goes along, they have more and more employees coming into work. Similar to the emergency department. Despite how many rooms there may be in the emergency department, you could be in an emergency department with 100 rooms. If we have, only staff, if we have staffing to, to work with 25 rooms, guess what? We're gonna be working with 25 rooms because there are only so many patients that our wonderful ER nurses can safely take care of at a time. And once we reach that limit, guess what? No other rooms are gonna become available for use until more staffing occurs. Um, until more staff arrive. So that explains why you may walk by empty rooms um, after you've been waiting for hours on end. Let's delve into other things that can be hap that, that are likely happening in the emergency department while you're waiting so patiently in the waiting room to be seen. There are two ways to enter into the emergency department, through the front door and through the ambulance bay. Again, people are constantly 
entering through the emergency department, both through the front door and the ambulance bay. And in the emergency department, we are in the habit of taking care of life and limb threatening scenarios. If you come to the emergency department with a life or limb threatening condition, you will jump the line regardless of how long other people have been waiting in the waiting room. And depending on what that situation is, it may take several of our um, emergency room staff members to really help save your life. And because of that, that will make more delays for the people waiting to be seen in the waiting room. When we finish stabilizing your life-threatening situation and the emergency provider steps out of your room, that dock can be pulled in one of a million different directions. Sometimes they're pulled into another patient's room that's also critically ill and actively dying. Other times there's a patient that was stable and for whatever reason became unstable. Um, maybe it's because their oxygen levels are going down or maybe it's because they're having problems with your blood pressure and that ED doc now has to go into that room and they are unable to go and address the needs of people in the waiting room. So a couple hours go by and now all of those patients have been stabilized and the ED staff is now able to start addressing the needs of the patients that are still in the waiting room. Does that mean that it will be your turn to be seen next? Not necessarily. Sometimes we may choose to see the person that actually came after you, maybe even two hours after you, because that has to do with two things. One, what was the reason why you came into the emergency department in the first place? And two, your vital signs. Vital signs are vital. And so anyone that comes to the emergency department with abnormal vital signs will likely be seen first. Now, with all this being said, you would think that someone who presents to the ED with a minor condition will never be seen. They'll be seen 24 hours later. And that's not necessarily true either. Many e ERs have a fast track area where patients who come in with minor complaints will be will be sent to that fast track area where they will be seen by our physician assistants and our nurse practitioners. So I have a question for you. Have you noticed a particular time in the day that you've come to the emergency department and been seen pretty quickly? If so, please comment below and share. For any healthcare professionals who have been listening onto this YouTube video today, is there anything that I missed or should add to what I talked about? If so, let me know, comment below. So if you guys enjoyed what I talked about today during this video and would like to hear more, please like the video and don't forget to subscribe and share and hit that bell button so that you can be notified of future videos when they are released. Until we meet again, stay safe.